So there I was, sitting amidst three monstrous trolls, and they were all discussing how they were going to cook us, squash us into jelly, or turned on a spit. I don't know how that story ends. <laughs> I don't Hello. think it's really a story. It's not really a story. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to uh, our channel. It is... Shocktober! <laughs> Continuing. <laughs> And we're here to talk about the Blair Witch Project. Alright. Let's not light a fire tonight. Yeah. It's because I think two nights in a row we've lit a fire. Easy. We didn't light one the first night. And nothing happened. And nothing happened. We light fires, they know. They, I haven't heard anything follow us. We should even turn that light off, too. Alright. The Blair Witch Project is a film that I think is very near and dear to both of our hearts. Um. Uh, a lot of people, it's become a punchline, and I don't, I don't think that's very fair. No, it's not fair at all, uh, especially when the, the medium of found footage movies is getting so prevalent, like, you know, you have uh, Record and Paranormal Activity, all sorts of independent films that are using the, using the kind of filmmaking method that the Blair Witch innovated. Mm -hmm. We kind of have to take it back to formula and see the original. Right. And... Uh, you had more experience with this than I did, because you actually went to see it in the theaters. I didn't. Right. Well, you know, how it breaks down is, I wasn't always a horror guy. Like, I'm a child of the 80s. I was born in 1980. Mm-hmm. And, you know, those were the days where you talk about Michael Myers, Jason, Freddy, Chucky, things like that. I never actually saw that as a kid, and to this day, I've never actually sat through uh, a Jason movie. A lot of people say they have. I've never seen a Freddy Krueger movie either. I've, I've seen maybe two of each. Yeah. And uh, at the end of the day, I can't, I can't say I, I know a whole lot about either of them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like, this movie came out in, what, 99? Yeah, 99. I was 19 years old, and this was the first scary movie that I went to a theater, a theater to, uh, to see. And it scared the hell out of me. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing, is I never got that chance. Like, it... I don't know what happened, but I just wasn't around the right group of people. We never mm -hmm. got, got together to see it. I saw it, like, two years later when it came out on, on DVD. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was the thing, is the DVD was taken over. Right. Um, so, please, regale us about your experience in the movie theaters. And, you know, I think you're right when you say this movie is, uh, is treated unfairly because uh, a lot of people say, well, you don't see anything. But... That's part of it. That's part of it because... And that's a huge part of it. Yeah, it's, it's like the human mind is, is capable of creating something s scary to you, you know, basically. Well, yeah, in your mind, as, as people are going along through this film, it's very easy to look at it as create your own monster or create mm -hmm. your, own, your own villain. Mm -hmm. A situation that would terrify you. And uh, for me personally... You know, I don't, I'm not generally one to spook, but I hate being in the woods in general. Like, I, yeah. I brought this up in the channel in the past. I hate being lost in the woods. That's probably something that <laughs> would unsettle me more than most things. Right. Uh, I, I like to know where I am, what I'm doing, where I'm going, where I've been. But <laughs> uh, this movie, when I saw it, yeah, it keyed into that, that kind of nervousness. Right, and that was the one thing that I felt all the way through the entirety of the Blair Witch Project was nervousness. Yeah, you know, it's, um, like, I, I can't recall, well, you know, that's, that, that's exactly uh, the point was that uh, it's, it's kind of a fear of the unknown. You know, it's really. cliche to say that. But every now and again a film comes along like this and it highlights it to a T. Well, consider what was coming out at roughly the same time was a lot of movies based based on CGI. Mm -hmm. And this was kind of at the time where, you know, CGI wasn't really that good. It still looked phony. It still uh, looked really under the wrong circumstances. Really fake. So, you know, you gotta I kinda weighed it in my head that, you know, what is more scary, the the expectation of something horrible or something that looks stupid. Yeah. You know, and I'll side with this movie all all day, 
Oh yeah, and for that it works marvelously. I mean, uh, even in even in the the early parts of the Blair Witch Project, when they're talking about um, the legend of uh, I forget what her name was, uh, Bloody Mary. Well, it was like Mary Hodgkin or something like that. Yeah. I forget what it was. Mm -hmm. But even that had some elements of getting you ready and getting you thinking about things because. Mm -hmm. You know, these are this is essentially a campfire story, right? A campfire story that is taken to a finale, and I love that because you know campfire stories when you were a kid, yeah, they used to get to you. Mm -hmm. uh, the things that you shouldn't you shouldn't really worry worry too much about because you're safe asleep in your your bed and in, inside of your comfortable house. No, now you're in the wilderness and you're lost. Yeah. And the whole reason you're out there is because you were kind of kicking around old stones on a grave that probably shouldn't have been touched. Maybe. And, uh, yeah, it, when, when things start going wrong, they go wrong in a way that is just unsettling. Yeah, you know, this movie is, is to me a very groundbreaking movie. Like, like you said, we were talking off camera. Mm -hmm. This movie was basically the first popular found footage movie ever. Like, it, it really brought it to the, to the forefront. And I remember there were specials on television when this was in theaters oh. that, uh, you know, they'd, they'd run these fake news uh, reports about these three lost kids in the woods. Yeah. And they found the tapes and what happened to them. And uh, you actually had some friends that bought into that big time, right? Yeah, because they, they didn't tune in at the start of it when they were talking about the movie uh, as it was going to be released. So... Mm -hmm. They kind of joined in 20 minutes into the, the show, which was like an hour-long uh, lead-up to the Blair Witch Project. And they were hearing about manhunts, and they were, they were, they were talking to several uh, less-than-reliable sources as to the whereabouts of these kids. And I remember I had a couple friends that, you know, kind of bought into it. Mm -hmm. Like, they didn't know the premise of this, so it was, it was literally just an hour-long special, almost like, at the time... Um, uh, America's Most Wanted, that, that, that show was on too. Mm -hmm. And he was on that program as well. <laughs> so it added some legitimacy to it. And uh, yeah, it got to them. And that, that's, that's what you call laying a foundation. And the Blair Witch, if you just watch the movie, it does a good job. But the, to see it new, that marketing blitz and, mm -hmm. and the promotion and the way they handled it, it was spectacular. Yeah, I had never seen anything like this uh, before. Like this was my basically my first scary movie that I that I went to to uh, go see, and it was this, like you say, it was the huge marketing blitz. It was uh, it was actually doing things well ahead of its time, like uh, close to 15, 16 years ahead of its time. Where, yeah, when you uh, talk about viral marketing yeah. and, and going above and beyond what, what's expected. So you have a movie coming out. You're going to see the commercial. You're going to see the trailer in the movie uh, for in another movie that you're going to see. And that's about it. Mm -hmm. Now viral marketing, it's, it's, it's hitting TV. They, it, it, it's very Orson Welles-like in that. Yeah, that's that exactly it. Yeah. And uh, it was fabulous. And the movie is, is just such a great joy. To, or not a joy, but... It is one of the must-see horror movies of all time. Uh, I truly do believe it. Yeah, I will take a stand with you on that. This was viral before viral was a thing. Yeah, before you know. they had a word for it. They didn't know what they had, mm -hmm. but they knew it was good. Yeah. And, yeah, they, 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 they took the ball, and they, they ran into the end zone and just did the best touchdown dance ever. Yeah. For, <laughs> for a film with such a meager budget, but a lot of effort. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still making money, in, right. in my mind. Like mm -hmm. you know, they had they had a couple or one sequel didn't do very well. No, but that it it won't ever tarnish the first movie. Right. It's just fantastic and total classic. Total classic. And if you don't know the story, you obviously ain't been watching horror movies. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we really need to run this down too much more, except maybe highlight your favorite scene in the movie. Well, my favorite scene, the one that's in. Uh, a chill up my spine at the time was the final scene where if you were paying attention to the the story the story to the uh, mythology of the Blair Witch what was um, what your final moments would be like where she would make 
you know, she would make kids stand in the corner. One kid stands in the corner while she kills one, and you know that's that's how it goes. Yeah. And so when uh, Heather is running around the house at the end, trying to find her friend, trying to find her friend, uh, and she sees him standing in the corner, I just a chill went up my spine, and I I just knew what was coming next, and that was that was completely it. Um, I think this is probably. It wasn't a twist, but it was probably one of the best endings to a horror movie. Yes, yes, it made a big impression on me as a as a younger man, and uh, I think it's it's completely unfair that people trash talk this movie as much as they they did. I don't even know. Like you, you know, the scary movie franchise. Mm -hmm. Like when that first came out, you know, they had the scene with the girl talking to the camera, apologizing to her mom, mm -hmm. and the big boogers running out of her nose and stuff <laughs> like that. You know, it, you, you can make fun of something if it's worth making fun of if they made a mistake. Yeah. No mistakes here. No. It's it's not a perfect movie, but it's it's one of the most most exemplary uh, ways to start a genre. Mm -hmm. Found footage, Blair Witch is still at the top in my mind. Mm -hmm. That's just how we roll here at the Sentinels of the Solar System. Turn them in my witch's room I got mad